Everybody's getting it, James G will even jack Cause I'm a beast on the track, when I fucking rap Okay, enough of this garbage, I'm causing a carnage I'm switching the barriers, I'm seeing the cabbage on this bastard Ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Shim T And we're about to not do a reaction We're about to talk about something that is very important, alright Something that might be um, uh, a turning point, alright in, uh, the, in, the, in the wave of um, hip-hop as far as the uh, situations go in Africa, all right. So, um, before we go further, please hit the like button, comment. Oh, sorry, please hit the subscribe button, all right. Like, comment, tell me what you think, guys. Let me know your opinions, all right. So, Calligraph Jones, Calligraph Jones, Calligraph Jones might be a bit more of a war machine than we might have given him credit for. So, a few days ago, about six days ago, Calligraph Jones dropped a song titled. Luanda Magere Legacy One. Now it was not a diss track per se, but it had a whole lot of shots in them. Uh, it was taking shots to the left, to the right, to the center, all around. All right. So um, now I have some contest to this, and I have decided to do a video talking about some of the people that Kalira Jones took shots at. I want to talk, talk about the. Um, likely implications now i want to talk about south african rappers how are they going to respond will they be responding all right so i want to talk about all of that guys so first of all when he dropped the when i did the reaction to luanda magari legacy one there was a comment in my comment section telling me luanda magari was um a person a hero of the luo speaking uh people of kenya so i did some digging all right not much digging but you know wikipedia stuff so i i did some research and i found out that uh, luanda magari was um born in the year 1720 to forgive me if i butcher this name if i murder this name he was born in the year 1720 to abonyo ward omolo or omolo i'm not sure what pronunciation is but um it's st something struck a chord like uh i have often um seen videos heard people refer to caligraph jones as um, omolo so i'm wondering if Kaliwab Jones has long styled himself after Luanda Magere. Alright, so that's a question for you guys to answer. Alright, uh, his name, the uh, nickname, or is his name Omolo? Does it have to do with um, his styling himself after Luanda Magere? Because here, we it, it says he was possessed of unearthly powers. Speaking of Luanda Magere, he was possessed of unearthly powers and his flesh was made of stone. Arrows, spears, and clubs simply deflected from his body, making him invincible during war. He was famously known to his, for his capability to tear an entire army apart alone. And there's a whole lot of story around the Luanda Magere about his greatness, right? His greatness down to um, uh, what was his downfall. But the most interesting part, as is relevant to this track, is that this man was invincible. He was somebody that could not be assailed. It was a man of war. Now, Caligraph Jones titling his um, track, which basically took shots in all directions, Luanda Magari Legacy 1, is, uh, is, is almost like it's saying we're about to uh, uh, achieve war heroism, lyrical war heroism, such as is worthy of the name Luanda Magari, like the legacy. We're about to replicate his legacy as far as hip-hop goes, as far as hip-hop battles go. So, uh, with that uh, uh, little story being told, I think it's time for us to move into some of the um, shots that Caligraph Jones took. Caligraph Jones is at war on every corner, and he keeps opening new fronts. He keeps opening new fronts, all right? First of all, there's uh, this um, uh, controversy, this, uh, should I say, conflict between him and Octopizo. In Kenya, now I've been told Octopizo was uh, the king of hip hop in Kenya until Caligraph Jones came on the scene. So there's this talk, people talk, these rumors that um, Octopizo lost a significant amount of subscribers, yet his views um, were high. So some people said that Octopizo bought views, that he bought the views. So there was a lot of talk around there, um, which was um yeah which was also part of the reason brida lw was arrested octopizo led uh, according to brida lw octopizo led um 
policemen to his house to arrest him and they extorted him and all of that so um i i feel like i believe that there was a shot here at um octo at octopizo by calligraph jones he said ain't nobody care for skill anymore because you can purchase a crown now that might be a shot at octopizo talking about um uh, 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 uh nobody cares for skill anymore as long as you can purchase views because sometimes people see views as um like as a crown to say okay this rapper is good so when you see when a rapper has a uh, hundred million views he is doing something right a lot of people appreciate him as king so, so that could be it that could be it All right now we're moving on to what i think is the most important part which is what this video is centered about all right the um subliminals in this video that uh i feel like um could have very important ramifications if these issues are followed up he took a lot of shots at the south so chief of all i think he took a shot a shot at nasty c i think he took shots at nasty c he said international markers for africa never existed it don't matter if, if you're better than kendrick or jico then he continued he said you got a billion streams you must be the best man signing big deals from universal to def jam it should be worth nothing it should be worth nothing that um nasty c has signed deals from umg all right from universal um to def jam all right now nasty c is signed to dave to, to, he has um a deal with, with def jam all right he just signed it this year so it says but if you are african you will never blow in the states and it's intentional because this label has been knowing the stakes and basically you are selling your soul to the highest bidder said they will gas you up tell you you're the, you the hottest spitter but basically to them you're just another nigger so basically you're selling your soul to the highest bidder so it was almost like he was giving us to see a lecture there telling him bruh all this all of all of this movement is good all of, all of this movement will not guarantee you success though something of the sort right because it was clearly um it was, this this there, was, there were a whole lot of references that would that fit oddly to nasty c right talking about the uh billion streams talking about the universal to death jam so it seems to me like that was nasty c now if you are not sure that was nasty c there are other lines that go further to um um almost make a stronger to make a stronger case that th that these lines were aimed at nasty c he says um along the line he said south africa baby south, south africa baby you're next i've been waiting to flex i'm about to pull up in josie in Joburg. steady waving a tech steady waving a tech um i don't heard I, I don't heard a conversation with some niggas from the south motherfuckers want to act like they don't know what i'm about now i have a clip someone sent me a clip where nasty c was being interviewed and and he was asked about um calligraph jones and he was like man i've never i've never listened to him all right i was like okay so almost like calligraph jones is not such a it's not, it's not such a big deal all right so that i've never listened to him but um, it was, it was, so I have I will I will post the clip here. Hopefully, hopefully the clip doesn't get taken. The video doesn't get taken down for copyright issues. But I'll post the clip here. Yeah, they spares so, like they go um, anyone from the two five four in Kenya that you've been listening to. They're like these are guys that I can give a nod to. Um, not really, man. I haven't really been put onto anybody else besides like it's out to so from here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's out to so obviously. Um, uh, bro, he's up and coming still. Mm -hmm. Um. Shapa man, mm -hmm. no Shapa man, right? Yeah. Shout out to Shapa. Jones. I met, I met, I met him, but I haven't had a chance to listen to his music like that. Oh damn! You know? should get you on so, he said, um, so Kalira Jones continued and says, uh, with some, he said, I, I don't hear the conversation with some niggas from the south. Motherfuckers want to act like they don't know what I'm about. If you don't know who I be, then you're stupid without a doubt. <laughs> then he, uh, so first of all, we see that right niggas from the south south africa obviously right so the person that i know had a conversation around that was nasty c and then at the same time it fits into the universal and def jam um lines so i am pretty sure that those lines were taking those lines were shots at nasty c so then at the end he said um uh niggas in saloon leave my name out your mouth so that's shots in kenya shots in um uh south africa and shots in sierra leone and earlier on before earlier on he said um he said something about uh uh nigeria made me say uh, i took over the, i took over the, the rest the west 
Nigeria made me a vet. Now some people might speak offense. Some people might speak offense. So another another um opening might just happen. Some people might take, take offense. But I doubt that. I think the most likely uh front uh Kenya, South Africa and Sierra Leone. I am more interested in two fronts. Kenya, uh, South Africa and Sierra Leone. Now that leads us to the next thing. How do I think these South African rappers will respond? Nasty C recently signed to Dave Jam. Alright. As much as as much as Caligraf Jones will be continuing with um, the Luanda Maguire legacy, as he has said, this is uh, this is Luanda Maguire legacy one, the first in the series. I think that Nasty C might just shy away from a battle. He might shy from confronting because he just signed to Def Jam, and if he should take an L, <laughs> if he should take a loss, because you know you know how um, this. Um, um, American hip hop society tends to see African hip hop society almost like it's, it's not major, almost like we don't have good speakers. So, if you should take an L against an African rapper, which he will most likely do because Calligraph Jones is, is monstrous, all right. So, I think because of that, Nasty C would, would, would avoid this whole confrontation, he would not, um, he would not, he would, he would ignore it, he would act like he did not notice. Because he would not want to take an L while while um, trying to do some things with, with uh, while trying to while trying to blow while trying, while trying to make it big in the American market, which 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 is also which um, also takes us back to the line where Caligula Jones was telling him um, was, was telling him even you could be signed to Universal or Def Jam, but you will never blow in the states, and it's intentional because these labels be knowing the stakes that they'll just be gassing you up, telling you you're the, you're the hottest pizza, but to them you're just another nigger. Right, so that could be it. Now, I don't think Nasty C will respond. I don't think so. Now, it would be great if Nasty C would respond. Nasty C, Aries, the, whole, um, the uh, South African rappers who Calibra Jones has taken shots at talking about, he'll be pulling up in Joe in Joe in Joe Bell within the text saying, South Africa, baby, you're next. I'm, I'm about to violate you next. Now, it would be great if they would respond, but the truth is. In my opinion, and I'm not trying to underrate um, South African artists, in my opinion, I'm not aware of anyone so far. Maybe, maybe the closest would be, would be Aries. Maybe the closest would be Aries who um, could go toe to toe with Kalira Jones on this. In my opinion, maybe Aries. I don't think any other person. I don't think Nasty C can. Nasty C is a great rapper. All due respect, the man is a great rapper. But I don't think that he can go toe to toe with Caligraph Jones. So that is a good reason why a lot of South African rappers would most likely ignore this. But let's imagine that they actually take up this um, this conflict, that they actually get involved in this lyrical exercise, which is what it is. There's no real hate involved, all right? It's just a lyrical exercise, guys. Just a lyrical exercise. There's no real hate involved. Now, I think that if they get involved in this, if they get involved in this, it will have a lot of positive um, implications, positive um, ramifications for hip hop in Africa. This is why I say so. Earlier on, Caligula Jones had um, a grapple with Black Bones, right? When he dropped his um, his, his um, uh, this track, um, um, best rapper in Nigeria. Now, Black Bones is not um, the pinnacle of Nigerian hip hop. I mean, we still have Mi, we have Vector, and the others who Caligula Jones paid respects to in Nigeria, but he had. Um, a, a beef with black bones not like I said let me call exercise not hate and black bones at the time was one, was one of the hottest right probably still is and um, um, clearly he won by popular um, opinion Caligula Jones won so after that after that um, uh, that beef after that diss track after the, after, after the both of them had gone um, back and forth one thing that was clear to see is that there was a sense of community between West Africa and East Africa, as far as hip hop goes. People from the West, Af people from West Africa, know more artists from East Africa than we did before. We know more artists from Kenya than we did before. I mean, we are reacting to them all in the same community. And people from East Africa know more rappers from West Africa. I mean, recently Caldenero has come to light. Now you may think whatever you want to think about him, right? You may think whatever you, whatever you think of him, but um, he, ha he has been more. Um, he and Sierra Leone rappers have become more. He and Sierra Leone rappers have become more popular these days. All right. 
So, picture this. A situation where Calligraph Jones, who played a major role in West African and East African hip-hop communities, at least on YouTube, being united in a way, right? at least being a community. Now, imagine if there is a, um, an actual lyrical exercise between Calligraph Jones and South African rappers. I think it will have the same effect. All right, I think it will have the same effect. I think that there would be there will be a lot of reactions surrounding that beef, and that will open the channel up for um, a community to foster between South African hip hop um, artists and um, West African hip hop artists and um, East African hip hop artists. Now, collaborations might take a while, or they might come quickly. But one thing that is certain is that we would all be involved in one community, which is great, which is great, all right? Which is a great thing, which is a great thing. Now, um, that is one reason why I believe that South African rappers should take this up. This is one reason why I believe they should take this up. It will be better for all of us on the long run. It will be better for all of us on the long run. Not to mention, all right, it will add, um, in, South in, in most African countries, hip hop seems to be um, uh, feeding into the background it seems to be if, if, if not feeding it seems to be relegated in a way in nigeria um afro beats is by far the biggest i have no issues with afro, afro beats being the biggest all right but at least hip-hop should get a significant amount of attention a significant level of attention all right which it doesn't get um uh, in kenya i know for sure that there's a, a genre of music called gengetun which is gaining ground has probably become bigger than um, hip hop. I don't know for sure. Now in in South Africa, I know that Kwaito. I'm funny enough. I, I have never heard any Kwaito music, but I I have heard about I have heard about the genre of music, and I have heard that it is take, it is likely taking over South African music society. So hip hop would um, benefit from such an activity as Calligraph Jones, uh, Luanda Magiri, um conflict with south africa the south african rappers all right i feel like hip-hop as a whole in africa especially in west east and south would benefit so that is the reason why i think they should get involved but they should be cautious bruh they should be cautious all right calligraph jones is not um uh, as we have seen calligraph jones is not a lightweight all right it's not lightweight all right so um regardless of uh, amount of number of views regardless of um, uh, big deals or whatever um, might be associated with success which Calibra Jones has a fair deal of or at least a, a, at the very least a fair deal of right at the very least a fair deal of I would advise any rapper to be cautious when going head on head with Calibra Jones now all of this comes while we are expecting Caldenero to drop his um, uh, diss track towards Calligraph Jones and I believe he will be dropping it this weekend. So guys tell me what do you think? Do you think South African rappers will respond? Do you think um, Calligraph Jones should go ahead and give them another nudge? Do you think Calligraph Jones should go directly this time and hit them over the head? Call out names and give them uh, the Luanda Margaret Legacy too. What do you think guys? Do you think that is necessary for uh, to foster a better um, uh a stronger a stronger sense of community in african hip-hop let me know what you think guys let me know what you think Pizza on the track i'm the one that make him run i'm the one that drop it hot fuck with me and you get shot they can get me if they plug i'm the baddest of the lot i'm the baddest of the lot